Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're going to be talking about the Modern Warfare beta and how much I enjoyed it because I really did love this beta. It was uh, kind of like a reignition of my love for Call of Duty because I haven't really been into Call of Duty in the last few years. I've enjoyed some of the recent titles but for the most part they've been pretty disappointing and not where I wanted the franchise to go as a whole. When I when I was playing back in the day I used to think of like where I imagined COD to be in the next five to ten years and sadly it has been really disappointing up until this point. I think that this beta, and I know it's a beta, it's not the full game, maybe the full game won't be as refreshing and, and amazing, but I think this is the direction that I always kind of dreamed Call of Duty would uh, eventually get to. And the very first thing I want to talk about is the new engine and how it feels absolutely incredible. It was definitely needed. They've been rocking this same old ass engine for so long and to have this brand new engine uh, that feels a bit more fluid and smooth the gunplay feels even better than ever the recoil on the weapons feels realistic but not out of control or like too hard to handle but I was really worried initially when I looked at the trailers for this game and the new engine looked a little clunky and kind of like Battlefield's engine which is a good engine but it's slower but it's not like that at all it actually it's very manageable and it's amazing <laughs> i don't know what else to say the, the engine the graphics the gunplay is all perfect here i think this is the best that call of duty has ever seen in that department another good thing i want to talk about briefly is the time to kill it feels absolutely perfect in this game and i don't think they've ever fully nailed the time to kill in a call of duty game uh black ops 2 was pretty good although it did take a few more bullets than i would have liked call of duty 4 and and, and things like that I think were probably the best time to kill despite there being you know the M16 that was a one burst which was overpowered but other than that I think that this might be the best time to kill in any Call of Duty game well I think there's definitely a few strong weapons that I'm sure they're gonna look to balance when the full game uh, releases such as like the M4 it's really strong right now it's the starter weapon it's clearly the best option uh, but other than that I mean the time to kill across all weapons still feels amazing. I mean, it just, it doesn't take too many bullets to kill. It, it's not like you die in half a second. They just, they did a really good job on the time to kill. Next thing I want to touch on is how deep this game feels already in comparison to recent Call of Duty titles. Things like the deployable shield and the ammo box that are replacements to the crappy specialist system that were just kind of a gimmick to me and didn't really fit well into Call of Duty. They were basically like copying ults or supers from Destiny and I really do not like those in a Call of Duty game so I'm glad that those are out the window and we've got these new earnable kind of uh, deployable things that you can earn but I think the best addition of them all is the new create a class system. Man I just gotta say that this is how create a class should have always have been. I didn't mind the pick 10 system from Black Ops 2 but man this game's customization is is on a whole nother level it's something that makes perfect sense in Call of Duty it's not restrictive but it doesn't feel like you have too many things to worry about and manage when creating a class it just allows for you to create guns with as many attachments as possible I think it's five attachments which is crazy but you don't have to forgo any perks or uh, lethal or tactical grenades in order to achieve that it's very in-depth every attachment kind of has a positive and a negative it's just a very well done customization system it's very in-depth I just think they really nailed this one now let's talk about probably the most important thing in any Call of Duty game, and that is the maps. Now the maps in this game are not perfect, but I gotta say they're a step up from the three lane maps that they've had for the last four Call of Duties. That three lane map design is just god awful and it just caters to one play style. There's no diversity in gameplay, you're either going down lane one, two, or three. Every single game feels the exact same, and in this game, you can approach so many different uh, situations in so many different ways. I definitely understand that these kind of maps cater towards a camper's playstyle, and I can see where that's frustrating. I think everybody is frustrated with campers in any video game, and I'm not saying that these maps are perfect, but there's so many ways to approach every single gunfight. There's so many different advantageous positions and pathways to get to one place or another, but it's not cluttery or overdone like Call of Duty Ghost maps were. I feel like in this game, they're pretty balanced. They're actually kind of small maps, to be honest, in the uh, 6v6 playlist. They're actually a lot smaller than I think most people realize. They're not as big as even Call of Duty 4, Modern Warfare 2, or even Modern Warfare 3 maps. Overall, I think it's a huge step up though from the three lane map design. These maps in the beta, if they're a sign of what's to come in the full game's release in the 6v6 playlist, I think these are just a perfect kind of map in my opinion. And I know that's probably not a popular opinion. Most people I've been seeing aren't too big a fan 
of these maps, but personally, I like them. As for the maps in the 32v32, we only played on that one map. It was huge, but it was a pretty good map. Had a few imbalances here and there, but that's kind of to be expected in Call of Duty's first time trying a 32v32 mode, which I'll talk about that in another video or something. That mode is amazing. That map is actually pretty good as well. Overall map design is great. Not to mention, kind of uh, going back to the topic about graphics, these maps look absolutely gorgeous. The colors are not dull like Call of Duty Ghosts or Modern Warfare 3, but they're not cartoonish and too colorful like the Black Ops games. I think they really nailed the color scheme and kind of the, the feel of a realistic place that doesn't feel over over colorized, if you will. Really well done design. Something that goes hand in hand with the maps is the mini map that shows teammates and map layout. But in this game, it actually does not show enemies on the mini map when they are shooting their weapons. Instead, shooting enemies show up on the compass or the top middle of your screen, which I find to be pretty awesome. And initially, the beta launched without a mini map at all, and I didn't actually play without the mini map, but I personally don't like the idea of that, so hopefully they keep the mini map permanently. With this new redesign of the minimap and not showing up on the radar when you're shooting but instead on the compass, it makes it feel like I don't need to run a suppressor as much as I used to feel like I had to in the other Call of Duty games. So I can free up that attachment with something else, which is great because I really hated relying on, on a suppressor on almost every single weapon class that I had just to show off radar. It also makes me not crutch too hard on the minimap itself and always look for shooting enemies and instead just kind of look kind of look dead center and look towards the compass of where I'm going and uh, see if I see red dots shooting there. I don't know what it is about this change. I think it's just a far superior and a small but better change overall for the entire game. But like I said, I hope they keep a mini map at the very least to show your teammates and the map layout because removing it entirely, I really didn't like the sound of that. So like I said, hopefully that stays. Another change that I'm a little indifferent on, not sh quite sure if it's positive fully, is the fact that kill streaks are back in replacement of score streaks, which I really like the idea of score streaks because it promotes objective play, but for whatever reason, kill streaks feel more powerful and they feel more rewarding because they seem to take less kills if you're just focused on getting kills in like something like Team Deathmatch. It doesn't take as many kills as it seemed. A UAV in Black Ops, it would take like five kills because of the way that the score streak system was set up. And in this game, it's of course three kills if you have Hardline on, which is amazing. And the final thing I'll say good about this game is that the sound is amazing. The gun sounds, the footsteps, the environment sounds, the explosions, everything sounds absolutely perfect. That's just probably due to the really well done engine that they have created from the ground up it seems for this game. But now let's talk about the bad things in this game. And I'll be honest, there's not too many things that I disliked about this game, but there are a couple things that are definitely problematic that I would hope to, to see fixed by launch. So let's talk about those. All right, the first bad thing is that the spawns are horrible. They're garbage, they're completely fucked. I don't know how. Throughout the years of Call of Duty since the original Modern Warfare, they the, the spawns have progressively gotten worse over time. And I don't understand how they can't get spawns down in any Call of Duty game. They seem to always be the problem in every Call of Duty game, and especially this game. It's it's unbelievably bad in this game. I don't know how. I They gotta fix them. They gotta do something. I don't know how to fix them. They gotta do something. The second bad thing in this game right now is Ghost, because it is definitely a camper's paradise perk to use, because right now Ghost, uh, it works permanently. As in, if you're camping in a corner and someone calls in a UAV, you don't show up on radar. But in Black Ops games, if you're camping in a corner and you have Ghost on, you still show up because Ghost required you to be uh, actively moving to hide from radar. But in this game, you're just permanently off radar, which is horribly imbalanced and promotes camping. I think if they were to make that change, campers would uh, be even less of a problem in the game. So that is, that is something they definitely need to change back to how Black Ops games have it. And that's gonna pretty much wrap up everything I have to say about this entire beta. It has been amazing. Like I said, reignited my love for Call of Duty. This is gonna be a great game. I can't wait to get this day one. I'm gonna be playing it as my primary PvP game. If the game, for whatever reason, after launch has major problems, then I'll wait till they get fixed. But I'm definitely gonna pick it up, at the very least for the campaign, because that looks to be really good. They just released a campaign trailer today. Looks awesome. Can't wait to try that out. Anyway, thanks for watching the video, guys. I'm definitely going to be playing a lot of Call of Duty this year, but I'm going to also be playing a lot of Destiny. 
the Shadow Keep expansion comes out in just a week from today. I'm going to be pretty busy this October and honestly the rest of 2019. A lot of video games coming out, a lot of games I'm going to be going to be playing. Hopefully there's going to be a lot more videos on the channel. Stay tuned because I'm going to be posting probably pretty soon a Destiny video in relation to Shadow Keep. So keep your eyes peeled for that video and I will see you guys later.